In this episode, I want to show you some ways to use markers and stamps to get some watercolor effects or shading. And so we're going to use our stamps. I've got a couple of markers. We have our water brush and a blender pen. Now the blender pen has, uh, it's a double tipped, so you could use it for, you know, kind of keep one side for one uh, set of color families, the other for um, other color families, and then you don't have any trouble with them, you know, mixing together. So we're going to start out with our stays on again because it's waterproof. Remember, leave your uh, plastic with it. It's not packing material. You'll need it so that it uh, doesn't, it's a solvent-based uh, ink pad, so you don't want it to evaporate too soon. So we're going to ink up our stamp. Now I already did this once and I kind of messed it up, but you know, we carry on. So we're just going to stamp that down. And then we're going to take our marker and our water brush. Now this is a double temp tipped uh, marker as well. So this is a stamp and write marker and it has one uh, end that is small. You can do detail work or write with it. And then the other one is the brush tip and the brush tip is the one that we're going to be using. So we're going to take our brush uh, our water brush and we're simply going to just touch it on the end of our marker and pick up color. And we're just going to start laying the color down here and just squeeze a little bit of water with our ink. And you'll see you've got just a real light color wash here on our flower. But you know, that's the beauty of watercolor. And you don't have to worry about getting every single little spot covered. If you'll notice, watercolor a lot of times, you know, doesn't have every single nook and cranny colored in. And, you know, when you've got some light places, it looks a little bit more like highlights. I'm going to color most of it in today, just to give you an idea. And then if there's places you want a little bit darker, we're going to go back in and just add a little bit more color. And you'll see it just doesn't take very long at all to, you know, to move the color around and use this technique. So there you've got a, a little stamped flower. And um, then another thing that you can do, we're going to use a different little flower here. Now sometimes, um, if you've got any trouble with these sticking sometimes, I just use the same, uh, the same stamp cleaner that I use on the rubber stamps and it works really well. Um, if they have any oils or anything on them, you can clean them off. So I don't know. And make sure your block is clean. This one is kind of dirty looking, as you can see. Yep, that's not going to stick. Hang on just a second. I had a paper towel here. I'm just going to squirt a little bit on the paper towel and wipe my block and the back of the stamp. And we'll try that again. Okay, so this time, I'm just going to take my brush tip on my marker, and I'm just going to color it in on the stamp. You don't want to, I'm kind of messy. Just get it all on there. Now, you know, you might be wondering, why would you use a marker instead of a stamp pad? Well, you know, a lot of times it's easier to have way more, you know, um, markers than it is, you know, a whole complement of every color of stamp pad. So if you've got a, um, a marker that's kind of juicy and you can use it for this method, this works really great. Some markers are juicier than others. They have, they seem to, you know, release their ink a lot more quickly and they're easier to use for a technique like this. We want to use quite a bit of it. So now then, as you go through, you can imagine that part of it is starting to dry. So all you want to do is just, you know, open your mouth and breathe on it. <sighs> they call that huffing. That's a real technical term. We're just going to stamp it on there. I kind of had a, a little ghosting image there. And then you can just take your watermark again and just, you know, use it like this. Just kind of, you know float the color around. I 
it's just a way to move the color around. You want to be kind of careful around your edges. And you want to be sure to use watercolor paper for this technique because you'll be able to move the water around more easily on top of the paper. Okay. Now something else that you can do, we're going to use this with a, a smaller marker. And then just regular paper. And this time we'll go ahead and color our image again. We're going to use regular, um, the regular white cardstock, the Whisper white cardstock from Stampin' Up. I'm just going to color it in real well. And this time I'm going to show you how to use a blender pen. And I like to use a blender pen on a smaller area. If this was too much bigger, we wouldn't be able to move the color around as quickly before it dries. <sighs> so I'm going to breathe on it again. I'm going to stamp it off to the side here to get a better image. Okay, now then. And I've already been using pink on this side. And then all you want to do is just simply move the color around. And this gives you a little bit different look for your shading and color. The other color stays more defined. You don't want to rub too much or your paper will start pilling. So that's why I said you want to do a um, do an image that's not too small or just work in small areas. Otherwise, the more you move uh, the color around with your blender pen, the more that the paper is going to start pilling. So there you've got a different way. Now this time I want to show you how to use a two-step stamp. You'll see here's here's the stamp that's going to have the line art on it. We're going to stamp that and it stays on. That's waterproof. And then we're going to use the, um, the, the next stamp and we're going to put the color on this one. So anytime that you've got the two-step stamps, you're going to use the one that has the line art first and that's the one you're going to you know have in your darker color and it's going to have more definition to it and then your color that looks more solid that's the one that's going to have um, you know that's going to lay the color down on the top so we're, again I'm going to use quite a bit of water with this technique so I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to use the stays on and so it doesn't smear we don't want our black to smear we're just going to stamp that on and then I'm going to take that off and we're going to use this one and we're going to just color it with the marker. Oops, I'm always pulling the wrong end off. Mm. Okay, so we're just going to color this on here. And with this technique, it doesn't matter if you get every little bit colored because we're going to give it just a fine mist with some water. And so the color is going to kind of bleed around anyway. But that's what we want it to do. So we're going to get this all colored in. Okay, and now I'm just going to give it a fine mist with some water. I'm going to spray it off to the side once. My mister doesn't always work real great. <laughs> okay. Doesn't, I can't really tell if that's on there very well. You just want to lay it on here, stamp it on, and then you've got that little bit of color on there. And, you know, you can use whatever color that you want. Um, this one was Wisteria Wonder, and I thought it might have a little bit more purple to it. It looks a little bit more blue on here today. Well, that's what color it is. Okay, I guess you can't expect a different color than what you put down. <laughs> so, um, let's do that again. Let's try it with a different color. Let me wipe off my, my stamp. And wipe the color off of there real quickly. And where was the black part? Okay. 
She didn't really get that ink to that well, but that's okay. Anyway, I wanted to show you today some different techniques that you could use. To get a few different tech, um, different look to things that you might be working on. These are great to make a card or a little project. Now next week we're going to work on some things that would be great for little um, little treats for Easter. It's spring, it's Easter, Easter is kind of early this year. So you could use them for Easter or May Day, whatever you want. I'm gonna spray it again. And this time I use that pink. There, so you've got that watercolor effect. And you know, you've got little highlights in it. If you run across any places that, you know, you want it filled in a little bit more, you know, just take your water brush and move it around a little bit. That's kind of fun. I wouldn't color all of it in. Okay, so that's it. I hope that you, I'm not gonna make a project with these today. I just wanted to show you the techniques. So I hope that you give that a try. And if you do, um, be sure and come post it on our Facebook group, group Artful Adventures. And let us see what you're making. Thank you.